So this year, Serious Mania has been canceled. As so many other international uh, festivals or events that had been unfortunately planned for the same time as the global pandemic hit the world. This particular cancellation made me especially sad because I look forward to Serious Mania probably more than to any other festival or industry event. And I have more than one good reason for that. First, Serious Mania is a 100% TV and digital serious festival, which means that uh, at every festival event, I'm surrounded by people who are as passionate about narrative television as I am. Second, Serious Mania provides me with a great and rare opportunity to see new series that are produced outside the UK and the US. Yes, that does happen. And in fact, every year going into Serious Mania, I am more and more eager to discover new series that are produced outside the English speaking countries than British or American productions. So luckily for me, um, Serious Mania was one of the more progressive festivals that managed to move a part of their content online. And although I was deprived of the joy to share my passion for and, and excitement about quality television with other like-minded folk in a theater, I was still able to discover a few gems from different parts of the world on my own, participating at the Serious Mania digital forum from my catch. And since I am a generally generous person, I would like to share these gems with everyone that is willing to accept them. You're very welcome. What, what, what that, oh, how many hours of television did you watch? I hear you ask. Well, not that many, because Serious Mania screens only two episodes uh, of every season that they choose for their program. Excuse me? What? Oh, um, how can you judge if the series is good from only two episodes? You wonder. Easily. Uh, my main criteria is an answer to this one simple question. Do I want to see the rest of the season? Because very often I don't. And I'll go into reasons why a little bit later. But first, let me tell you about the series that I could not wait to see after getting a taste of them at the Series Mania Digital Forum 2020. Okay, first up is Unchained produced in Israel in 2019. Israeli series have uh, been a provider of some of the hottest formats in the global television market for quite some time now. Globally recognized TV shows such as um, Homeland on Showtime, In Treatment on NGBO, Fauda on Netflix, The Baker and the Beauty on ABC, and many others were originally conceived in Israel. So Israeli series have lately become a bit of a trademark for authentic, bold, and exciting television. Uh, when I once asked an Israeli studio executive for what were the reasons behind the global success of Israeli series, she replied very succinctly, we keep it real. And Unchained is a great testament to that. <clears throat> so the series tells the story of the rabbi Yosef Murat, who works at the rabbinical courts. His job as this, at this ultra-Orthodox institution entails convincing Jewish husbands to give their wives a divorce. You might think this is a period drama, but the series is very much contemporary. It turns out that Aguna, the chained wife in Hebrew, is still a thing in Israel. Um, it, um, uh, the term refers to Jewish women uh, whose husbands refuse to divorce them officially. A chained wife cannot remarry, and her children, if she has them with a man other than her uncooperative husband, are considered bastards. The husbands have their own reasons for not giving their chained wives a get, or divorce in Hebrew. They might have just disappeared without a trace, or, as in the case of Unchained, they simply enjoy their power. Sometimes they use this power to extort money from their wives, but very often they execute it just out of sheer desire to feel important. Because, as the series suggests, all other attempts to achieve that feeling in life miserably failed. 
So as you have probably guessed, those husbands are not uh, the positive characters in the series. And Joseph resorts to all means at his disposal when it comes to making these characters uh, change their minds. Most often he blackmails them, but sometimes he has to break their arms and legs, very literally. Although Joseph might seem as a true hero and champion of um, women's rights, in the pilot of the series, we see him spying on his own one. Uh-oh, that can be good, can it? Uh, it very soon becomes evident that Joseph's wife, Hannah, has indeed got something to hide from her husband. As we find out from an, an, a very awkward conversation between Joseph and his father-in-law, Joseph and Hannah have not made love for two years. Or maybe even more. Who can tell? <laughs> uh, definitely not Josef and Hannah because they try to protect their sex life from shameless probing of their families and community with all their might. But it's not easy to do. In the Hasidic community, reproduction is the main duty of every Jew. And the entire community oversees proper fulfillment of that duty. That's why Yosef's father-in-law, who's also a rabbi, religiously asked Yosef on a daily basis if he didn't stop trying. And he didn't. God is his witness. But Yosef can see that his every attempt at intimacy makes Hannah a lot, gives Hannah a lot of emotional pain. Um, thus he always stops. It is clear that the situation is very difficult for both spouses, uh, but they never talk about it. So it's a strange discrepancy. Everyone seems to be able to talk about the couple's sex life, except the couple themselves. And it's just a proof uh, of a well-known truth that giving advice and judging is much easier than actually dealing with the situation. Um, since Josef cannot get any clear answers from his wife, he keeps following her. But all he discovers are little pleasures, such as a mobile phone that she's not supposed to have, a few artistic photographs of a neighborhood that she's not supposed to visit, her hands in a poster for which she's not supposed to pose. Counting all the do's and particularly don'ts that Hannah is supposed to observe, we understand that she's not that different from the chained wives whom uh, Joseph is helping. Seemingly, she has a loving husband, but in reality, she cannot do anything she wants. She's chained to a relationship that was imposed on her by the society. Does she love Joseph? Who can tell? Probably not even Hannah herself. Love doesn't seem to be a popular topic of discussion when it comes to marital relationship. Duty is. But what do you do when duty becomes unbearable? That is, to me, the main question that the series raises. And I hope to get an answer to this question is what makes the series so universally relatable. Even if you know and want to know nothing about the Jewish faith and the Hasidic lifestyle, you know what a pressure from your society feels like. Most often, or virtually every time, every society and community has norms that are unquestionable. And we follow these norms blindly. They give us a feeling of security and acceptance, but every now and then, they can become a burden. We're lucky if our society provides us with coping mechanisms for these moments, but very often, as in the case of Hanan, it doesn't. And then these moments become the loneliest, scariest, and most painful moments of our lives. And every frame of Unchained oozes this kind of pain, fear, and loneliness. The creators of the series keep it real, indeed. The series is filmed in an almost documentary aesthetics that fully immerses you into its characters' everyday routines. But the superb acting of the cast not for one moment allows you to forget that the seemingly monotonous mundaneness of the characters' lives conceals a great deal of complex and complicated feelings and experiences. And Ching draws us into the world that is highly unfamiliar to most of us and makes this world rely, relatable to all of us at the same time. And that, to me, is a sign of great television. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find the whole first season of Unchained with English subtitles on any VOD platform yet. But if you are luckier than me in this respect, check it out and let me know where I can watch it. I think it's going to be worth it. 
So uh, up next in my lineup of Digital Gems is a very exciting web series from Czech Republic. And I'll talk about it in a few days. So um, stay tuned and stay healthy. <laughs>